Resin modified glass ionomers represent a combination of glass ionomer and resin particles. Now they offer the same benefits as glass ionomers, such as fluoride release, combined with stronger mechanical properties that make them more ideal compared to traditional glass ionomers. Resin modified glass ionomers actually have a chemical bond to the two structure. They do this through the carboxylate ion binding to calcium ions that are left residual in the hydroxyapatite. There's also a little bit of a micromechanical retention of the resin modified glass ionomer to the dentin. This is typically due to the fact that the glass ionomer itself does contain polyacrylic acid, which serves to basically do a very mild self etch to the dentin, creating micromechanical retention. Now, just like resin composites, the ability to bond to the tooth is influenced by multiple factors. The dentin quality itself is different at the DEJ versus at the pulp. And most of the time, we're placing restorations in teeth that had caries to begin with. So the dentin itself has been affected by the caries. Now in another video, I actually mentioned the difference between infected and affected dentin. In the majority of the situations we have clinically, we're actually removing the infected dentin in its entirety. However, there are some current literature articles that does support leaving caries, especially if it means you're leaving caries over a healthy, intact, vital pulp. You may do this to avoid a potential pulp exposure that could lead to more costly and more invasive treatment for the patient. Affected dentin does not need to be removed. And one of the reasons why is because it does not contain large amounts of bacteria. The dentin itself is actually more demineralized, meaning that it's very porous and it's actually more susceptible to water pooling in the dentin due to fluid from the dentinal tubules. Previous studies have actually shown that when we try to bond to affected dentin, we're actually getting lower bond strengths than we would if we were bonding to normal dentin. Some manufacturers recommend that prior to placing a glass ionomer or resin modified glass ionomer, that you actually use a cavity conditioner. This could be in the form of a 10% polyacrylic acid conditioner or a 20% polyacrylic acid conditioner. Although GC Corporation does make a self conditioner that does not contain polyacrylic acid, but instead contains a phosphoric acid ester monomer. When we use a cavity conditioner, we're not removing the entire smear layer. We are removing, however, a small part of that smear layer. And in some situations, even if you don't use a cavity conditioner and you just place either a glass ionomer or resin modified glass ionomer, we know that those materials contain polyacrylic acid. So even without a cavity conditioner, you're actually going to get a little bit of self etching of the tooth structure if you place a glass ionomer or resin modified glass ionomer. So a good question is, do we actually need to use a cavity conditioner? Or can we just let the glass ionomer or the resin modified glass ionomer actually self etch the tooth? Is that sufficient? That's a really good question because if you look at a lot of the manufacturer guidelines, many times they make the actual cavity conditioner step optional. And who knows, maybe they do this because it actually saves the clinician chair time. However, sometimes speeding up the actual procedure does not always equate to better quality restorations. A recent benchtop study in the journal Operative Dentistry actually wanted to look at this very question of do we need to use a cavity conditioner? So what they did was is they created some samples and they had a group where they placed no cavity conditioner, another group where they placed a cavity conditioner containing polyacrylic acid, and another group where they actually use a self conditioner containing a phosphoric ester monomer. And they wanted to look at what were the actual bond strengths to normal dentin and artificial caries dentin. So if you use resin modified glass ionomers in your practice, the results of this study are actually gonna be very beneficial to you. One of the first things that they found from this study was that if you use a cavity conditioner or a self conditioner, it actually results in higher microtensile bond strengths compared to no conditioner in the short term and in the long term of the restoration. 
The second finding was that the self-conditioner actually led to higher microtensile bond strengths compared to the cavity conditioner. And this was true in the short term and in the long term of the restoration. A third finding of this study was that no matter what method was used, the bond strengths at 24 hours were greater than the bond strengths at three months. Now, if you look at just the no cavity conditioner group, the bond strengths actually dropped dramatically from 24 hours to three months compared to the bond strengths barely changing from 24 hours to three months in the cavity conditioner and the self conditioner group. So the ultimate takeaway from this video is if you are using a resin modified glass ionomer restoration or glass ionomer restoration, if you want the best bond to the tooth, you need to use either a cavity conditioner or a self conditioner prior to placing your restoration. Now, if you're placing these restorations as more of an interim restoration, a short term restoration, this probably is not as critical. However, if this is going to be the definitive final restoration for your patient, make sure you're using either a cavity conditioner or a self conditioner.